Hi everybody, welcome back. I'm Lisa with Lisa Cape and Quilts. Today we're doing clue number seven of the Sunday Stars Mystery Quilt, a foundation paper piecing project. And uh, I feel like I've done this before, y'all. I have messed up so many times and restarted this video. And just to let you know, I keep saying clue number eight. But if I say that at any point in this video, just know we're working on clue number seven. In my mind, I'm on clue number eight. I don't know why. <laughs> But we have to do clue number seven first. Just to let you know, I do have my window open right here. You might hear some background noises. We have neighbors cutting grass, uh, chickens, all kinds of stuff. So you might hear some background noise. Are you ready to take a look at clue number seven? Before we do, uh, I just want to let you know that this week we're going to be doing a little extra something in this week's uh, chores or pieces to sew okay and we're going to actually be piecing 24 units and then we're going to be pre-cutting some set in triangles so let me just pull up this very first page right here okay we're going to be piecing 24 little corner or triangle units like this right with the brown fabric and the background fabric we're piecing 24 units you're also going to see uh, 16 of these pink triangles. Y'all remember back a, a few clues ago, we uh, glued some, was it squares, on a strip of fabric and cut those squares out and saved them for later. This is, very, this is the same thing except this time it's triangles. And just to let you know, we're going to be printing four copies of the foundation PDF. Okay, it's two pages. When you do, you're gonna have 16 of these pink triangles, but you only need 14 of them. So I want you to take two of them and put them in your recycle bin, okay? And then you can cut out all the rest of them. You need 14 of those. So let's take a look at where these pieces go in our quilt, okay? Let's pull up the entire quilt picture. This is our progress, including week number seven okay this week uh we're doing uh, quite a bit of sewing but it feels like we're not making big progress because it's a sashing piece <laughs> and if you haven't figured it out yet there's quite a few sashing pieces in this quilt that's what this week is it's a sashing week okay so there's the progress of our quilt now let me pull up a close-up of the pieces we're actually sewing this week and those set in triangles. So if you look at that top arrow, uh, it's pointing towards my head. Those are the little set in triangles that actually come to the edge of our sashing pieces right next to the border, okay? And we're gonna need 14 of them total. So that's what we're doing this week. And then the little sashing piece that we're making the arrow that's pointing up is pointing to that sashing piece. So these will go all throughout the quilt in sashing pieces, but those are the three, those are the two pieces that we're making this week. But we're doing something a little extra too, okay? So let's come down to the pressing board. And I hope I haven't confused you yet, right? I think you've got this. We're on clue number seven. So, um, oh yeah, see my magnets? I got my magnets and my steel plates for my premium board. Uh, those are on pre-order today and they're gonna be in the shop mid-May. So if you have a premium uh, or uh, any of the glow boards, the Caterpillar glow boards that don't have the magnetics in them, did you know you can get magnets that you put, uh, steel plates that you put on the backside? and magnets. I don't need them this week, but they're here in case you're wondering what that is. <laughs> um, let me move it out of the way. Where was I? Okay, let's come back all the, he all the way here. We're going to take two of these triangles, put them in the recycle bin. Let's take a look at this PDF, okay? On the first page, you'll see that we're working with background fabric, dark pink fabric, and brown fabric this week, 
okay? And it says we are sewing a total of 24 units. That means we're paper piecing 24 units, okay? We're going to be doing some stuff in addition to that. We will be cutting out 14 of the triangles, these triangles, and these we just put in our project bin and save for later, okay? And of course, all the information, how wide to cut your strips, how many strips you need, and like always, if you want to cut from pieces you've saved, you might need less strips, right? On page two, you're going to see something a little different. So this week, we're going to be taking the units that we're paper piecing, and we're going to be joining them to our previous clue, clue number three. Now, clue number three, I think we made two different units, right? But you're going to pull over clue number three, the unit that looks just like this. There should be 24 of them. You're going to bring this unit, all 24, and you're going to be messing with that this week, okay? And we're going to do that in today's video as well. All right, so I have all of my pieces. Did I say you're going to print four copies? This PDF is two pages long. When you print it, you're going to end up with 24, exactly what you need of the paper piecing unit. Toss two of these and then cut those out, okay? I'm going to go ahead and get all of my foundations ready and then we're going to do some paper piecing. All right, y'all, I have one of the 24 pieces we are sewing this week. Here it is. And uh, let me grab my little fabric pieces. We're gonna need two brown triangles and one background square. There we go. All right, we're gonna go ahead and flip this with the right side facing down. And this week, we're starting with the square and then piecing the two brown triangles, okay? So let's go ahead and flip that down. I'm gonna uh, add a little bit of glue stick right into position number one. And our first fabric, we're gonna lay over top with the right side facing up. I'm just gonna smush that fabric right in there. <laughs> All right, number two is over here. And uh, if you can see that, the long part of the triangle is down here. And this is a short side, short side. So when we're placing our triangle, it matters which direction it's going in, okay? So our triangle is gonna sit just like that, the long side of the triangle. So we're gonna flip it over just like that, right? And now I'm gonna bring this over. We're gonna sew our first seam. I'm gonna change the view of uh, my camera so we're not going back and forth, back and forth. And let me fix the lighting. Okay, I think that's a lot better. Let's sew this first seam together. So we're sewing in between position one and position two. to lower my stitch length. <laughs> I've been sewing my clues, the last four or five clues, with a stitch length of a 1.2 and that seems to work really well. So let's bring this back over. There we go. We're going to go ahead and flip over that paper side. We're going to trim off that extra fabric right there. We're going to add a little bit of glue. And we're bringing over that brown fabric and pressing that seam. All 
All right, and so the only other piece on this unit is piece number three. So let's flip it back over and let's flip up piece number one. And again, well, you see it better on the light pad, even though it's far away. The long part of the triangle is down here at the bottom, right? So it's gonna be sitting just like that. And we're gonna flip that with the right side facing down. just like that. See that? Let's go sew this seam. We're going to come back, we're going to flip over, and we're going to have to tear that paper foundation just a little bit right in that seam just to get that paper over. And we're going to trim up this extra fabric right there. We're adding just a smidgen of glue so that fabric stays over. And we're going to go ahead and press that fabric just like that. So here is the front of our unit, which looks a little haywire, right? <laughs> the magic happens when you trim off all the extra, right? At first you're like, that is not supposed to look like that. Here it is from the back side. I have a little bit of fabric extending beyond all of the paper edges. And let's go ahead and just trim this up, okay? You're gonna make 24 of these units. And then you're gonna trim them up and make them all nice and pretty. Do y'all hear my name? That's my neighbor's rooster. I don't know if y'all can hear that or not. <laughs> but they all talk to each other all day. All day long. All right, I'm even going to freehand cut the little tips of these triangles just like that. So there it is on the back side. See that? And there is my finished little sashing piece. There goes a grass cutter. <laughs> there we go. You're making 24 of these this week. All right, we're going to set this off to the side for a minute because I want to show you what we're going to do with these little units right here. Okay? So I stapled all mine together. You're gonna pull out your strip, and let me just turn on my iron, because I'm gonna actually use that this week. And let me remove myself from this so that you can see a lot more. There we go. Here is my strip. This week we are cutting one strip at exactly two inches wide, right? And from this one strip, we're gluing all of these triangles, 14 of them, to the back side. And that was my little note that I highlighted because I forgot to actually type that in the instructions. But when we uh, glue and cut out our pieces, we're gluing them to the back side of this strip. So a two inch wide strip, you just need one of them. And I'm gonna press mine because it got a little wrinkly in my little container there. So let me move this stuff off to the side. <laughs> It was all folded up inside that little container. I want it to lay nice and flat. And while that's cooling off, I also forgot to tell you 
uh, a measurement for this piece. So let's go ahead and measure that, okay? Where should we measure? Let's see. From here to the tip. is two and one, two, three, four, five, five eighths. See the little eighth marks on my ruler? It's two and five eighths from the tip here to there. <laughs> Let's get a measurement going this way from the flat edge here to the flat edge there. And you're looking at four and a half inches. Okay, I forgot to give you that measurement in the beginning. So four and a half from here to there, and two and five eighths from the tip <laughs> to the, the base, right? There's your measurements for that. This piece is exactly two inches from the outside line to the outside line at the tip. And so I cut mine out a little bit bigger than that, right? And uh, just because I stapled them and cut them all out really quickly. But when I cut them, I'm gonna make sure to cut on that line. Uh, and these pieces, you're gonna see you have that quarter inch seam allowance built in for piecing, okay? So let me get my little staple remover. Try to make sure that those go in the trash because <laughs> I don't want my cats to get a hold of them. We're working with the back side of this strip. See that? And what I'm going to do, I'm not going to do all of them with you, okay? But I want to show you how I plan on getting my 14 pieces. I'm just going to take my glue stick and I'm going to situate the, these so that that bottom line is right on that strip. See that? Actually I should cut these out directly on the line. Let me get a pair of scissors. <laughs> Let me start over. So this might take a few minutes, right? You could also just use this as a template and just cut out your pieces and then glue them on, which might be actually the easiest way to do it. Just know that if you're using the purple glue, I don't really trust the purple glue to stay on the entire duration of our project. I really just don't. <laughs> and uh, I plan on setting these in my project bin and just leaving them alone. You don't necessarily need the paper on these pieces, although I'm going to sew them with the paper on them. I know that might sound confusing, but that's why I'm gluing the paper to the actual pieces. Now I must have cut my strip just a smidgen smaller than what it needed, that's okay. I will do three of them with you and then <laughs> I'm not going to make you sit here while I cut all of these out on the line. More glue, more glue. There we go. Let's 
All right, I'm going to take my iron and I'm going to actually press these because I do feel like the glue is stronger if you press it and maybe it'll stay on there longer, right? And it'll help it dry a little bit faster. While that's cooling off, let me get rid of these little slivers everywhere because <laughs> I'm making a mess today. And my little lint roller is way across the way. Y'all, I think I finally got rid of the ants in my printer. Do you know what I had to do? Because they just kept coming out of there. Like, they just kept coming out and coming out and coming out. I put my whole printer in a trash bag and sealed and taped that bad boy up so no air could get to it. And I let it sit for two days. And when I took it off, there were dead ants in the bottom of the trash trash bag and not one single ant has left that printer since. So I think that that got rid of my problem. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? All right, so once you have all of your little triangles glued to your fabric piece, you're gonna come in and you're going to cut them out. Right, I'm gonna save that because I still have more to do. We're gonna just do these three with you. I like to separate them right in the middle and then I am going to cut those little tips off. So you're going to end up with 17 little units like this and like that, <laughs> right? So I have three done. I said 17. You need 14. See, there I go messing up again. You're going to have 14 little units that look just like this. And when you're done cutting all 14 out, you're going to put them in your project bin and just hold on to them. Okay. We're going to come back to these later down the road, 14 of these little guys. All right. So save those. Now, as part of this week, we're going to actually be doing a little bit of sewing, piecing two units together, okay? So you're going to bring in your 24 pieces that we are piecing for clue number seven. And you're going to bring in tw these 24 pieces from clue number three. There's clue number three. That particular piece right there, okay? So this is actually the end of a sashing piece. See that? And this gets sewn just like that. See that? So that's what we're going to be doing. At the end of this week, we're going to have 24 pieces that are together. All right. We're going to go ahead and sew these together. So let me show you. Uh, it might be helpful to have a little pin, right? We want the seams to match up right there, right? So let's flip over clue number seven <laughs> right on top. Okay, so it's going to go just like this, right? And then we're flipping clue number seven just like that right and the seam that we're actually sewing is right there on that line and that's one of the reasons why i'm leaving the paper on my pieces it gives me the exact seam allowance right i'm not having to make sure that i'm using the right seam allowance it's on the paper for me so the only thing i really want to make sure is that our points match right you have the uh, seam right there and right there. And I really don't want anything to move. You could glue baste that seam. I'm just gonna take a pin, right? And come right out on that seam. You have the line provided for you right there, right? Come out through in that seam right there. And then I'm gonna stick it right down into that seam 
right there. Whoops, <laughs> I didn't get it in the seam. There you go. See that? And all I'm doing is just matching up that point. Now one of the reasons why I've been cutting the little ends off of my triangle units is that when you do that, see the flat edge of our triangle now? It matches up exactly to the flat edge of piece number three. Do you see that? So that's one of the reasons why we're cutting the little edges off of our triangles as we go along. See that? Is it that flat end matches up to the flat end of this piece right there. So that's another way of checking to make sure your pieces are lined up when you're sewing them, right? So I have them pinned right in that point right there. And what I'm gonna do is grab a couple of binding clips. Again, you could glue base this if you want. Do I have any binding clips? I don't, oh, I have some big ones. <laughs> Here we go, we'll use some big ones on these little tiny pieces. That's all matched up right there, right? My pin's still in there. Just gonna clip. those pieces just like that. Now ordinarily I'd use the smaller binding clips. <laughs> and then I can take that pin out, right? And nothing is gonna move or shift around. Let me just put that pin there for later. Now let's come back to the sewing machine and we're gonna actually sew this, okay? Okay, here we come. We're gonna bring these pieces over. I'm gonna take that first clip out and just make sure it's lined up and I usually have a little leader. Let me just pull this in there. I'm still using the 1.2 stitch length, okay? Let's just see how that goes sewing these pieces together. See how I was able to just sew right on that line that's provided by the foundation, right? All right, let's come back over to the pressing board. <laughs> I realized you couldn't see me. <laughs> I was sitting there talking to you. All right, here we are, there's our piece, right? Now what we're gonna do is we're going to open this up, all right? And at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the paper that's gonna be in this seam, okay? But I'm gonna start working that seam in both directions. And then I'm just gonna remove the paper right out of the seam area. I'm just being careful because <laughs> I don't want all the rest of the paper to come off. Do you know what I'm saying? I'm just being a little careful. That's why it's taken so long. If I wanted to remove all this paper, I wouldn't be so careful. But I really like having the stability that the paper provides, right? And I like having that quarter inch sewing line already on there for me. So this, we're gonna open up this seam now that we've removed the paper, right? And I'm just gonna start working that seam open. Look at that pretty little checkerboard we have right in the middle, see that? 
and we're going to press this seam with no steam. Okay, we don't want to use steam because we still have paper foundation on our pieces, right? And they could curl up or the paper could shrink up a little bit. But I'm just going to use a little bit of heat. You could also use a seam roller if you don't want to use heat. But we're going to press this seam open, okay? Just a little bit of heat. And then I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to press it from this side. Now look how perfectly pieced that is. See that? And the sewing line on the foundation uh, helped play a vital role in that. See that? <laughs> There's the sewing line for the pieces that come down later on, right? And see how perfect the seam is on the back, right? So you're going to end up at the end of this week with 24 pieces that look just like this. Okay, there we go. Our sashing is well on its way. We only have a lot more to go, <laughs> right? There we go. So you'll end up with 24 pieces that look like that and 14 pieces that look like this with the paper on the back side. See that? It's going to come in handy down the road if you want to put the paper on. I know it seems tedious. And I know you're like, why is she doing that? But did you see how nice it was having that sewing line? It was also nice to be able to put my pin right in the tip and know exactly, know exactly where I need to line these pieces up, right? It's nice to have that paper on the back side. Okay? Uh, there we go. This is what we're accomplishing at week seven all right okay as always i feel like i'm forgetting to tell you all something i'm working on a strawberry project although i don't think i'll get to it the rest of today and tomorrow uh i have to go um and do some stuff tomorrow so i don't think i'll do it tomorrow maybe friday i'll have a chance to work on that video i'm super excited though because I get to use the little magnets on my glow board to keep the paper in place. I'm going to do a couple different things with that project though. But it's going to look like a strawberry pie. I'm so excited to do it. I've wanted to do something with a strawberry theme since I quilted my cousin's quilt with strawberries on it. And uh, so yeah, we're going to do a strawberry project. Probably look for it sometime next week. But I'm excited to do that. And I think it's always good to have something you're excited for, isn't it? I think it's good to have something to look forward to. Uh, it's easy to get in a rut, isn't it? I hope this project is keeping you out of, rut, out of a rut. And I hope that you're excited each week to see what we're doing. There's going to be a lots of little sashing pieces. I hope these weeks aren't boring for you. <laughs> Just know that in the end... These pieces here play a vital role in our quilt and they add such a design element that had we just done plain solid sashing pieces this quilt would not look the same so it's well worth the work. You're gonna love it. You're gonna love it. Okay everybody I am off to do lots of other stuff today. Thanks for hanging out with me and I look forward to seeing you on the Zoom tonight if you plan on joining me if you're watching on the replay we're not doing a zoom tonight but uh yeah and i'll see you for sure next friday bye everybody have a great week